All right. Hey, everybody. Artosis here. Casting another game from the CMSL 4. That is Caster Muse Star League Season number 4. This is from Group C. It's a best of one between Best and Sharp. The winner of this will actually end up winning Group C. Uh, and it is just an awesome matchup between two of the world's absolute best players. Up here in the top right of Optimizer, we have Sharp. He took down uh, YSC in that, that previous match and looking just fantastic. Uh, definitely one of the top five Terrans in the world. And then in the bottom right, one of the original six Dragons. It is Best. Best, one of the strongest Protoss in the world, no question about it. Definitely one of the most respected as well, and I can tell you that right now, as of this recording, during this season, he is considered one of the best Protoss out there. He has just hit another level, especially in his Protoss versus Terran. He has been ripping into absolutely everyone. So, let's talk about this map a little bit. This is Optimizer. It's definitely a very different map, a very fun map uh, that was in ASL in Season 10. As you see, there's two gases in the main, but they're not full gases. So you have the 4,000 gas on the top, and you have the 1,000 gas on the bottom. So every geyser generally has uh, 5,000 gas, but they've split this into two. Of course, don't forget, you do not uh, finish mining a gas ever once you run out of the 1,000 or the 4,000 on this top one. Uh, instead of mining eight at a time, you'll mine two. So uh, you're definitely going to get more gas income overall. But what this does is it allows you to do some interesting builds where you get a momentary gigantic boost uh, in gas. Uh, this bottom geyser with a thousand, uh, just to make it clear, will mine for three minutes and 20 seconds before it depletes. So basically you'll have an extra gas for about that long. So you can do some kind of extra gas heavy builds. Now in Terran vs Protoss, I don't think we're really gonna see that matter all that much. It's not as gas intensive, this matchup. If you look at something like uh, Zerg playing against uh, Terran or uh, Protoss playing against Zerg, the gas is gonna matter immensely. And you're probably gonna see that play a bit of a bigger role. But here, uh, not so sure. Uh, another thing to mention is we have a very interesting thing going on at the natural. Hopefully we'll see that shown in a moment here as Sharp sends down a Marine to chase back this probe. Uh, he's going to go ahead and bunker expand, but uh, this natural expansion, I guess I can talk more as, as they actually scout up. There's a bunch of minerals right here that kind of block going into the central area between the bases where we should see a lot of action, a lot of scuffles coming up. Okay, so a couple Marines here and he's going to be finishing that bunker at about three minutes get them in there before that first zealot comes up so best not going to try to run by or anything that would be a little bit foolish he just loses all pretty much for free gonna wait for a dragoon to pop up as well and honestly with three marines in there you're not going to see a pro gamer run by that bunker that's not going to occur in fact uh best right now i think he's probably just going to expand he is getting his range upgrade everything looking normal and now you're starting to see uh, the other interesting part of this map. As you can see, these 250 mineral patches, they do a couple interesting things, right? First off, they allow you to mine a lot more minerals at your natural for a limited amount of time. A normal mineral patch has 1,500 minerals, as you can see here. Uh, but at 250, you're still, you're going to mine for a decent amount. It's a lot more patches, so you can get a better spread overall. And then it opens up this, this area which has a lot of ledges and has ramps and stuff. And there's an expansion right here with the gas. So that that's kind of an interesting focal point. We're very likely to see Robo coming up. Oh my God. And in fact, it's a Citadel. So we'll talk about that in, well, in terms of what we've already discussed here, right? Uh, the reason why he's probably getting a Citadel is because it's a bit counterintuitive. The map is so good for shuttles it's so good for reaver harassment. It's so good to ferry units in and out of this middle area to harass with that it's almost a given that your opponent will go for go for the robotics. So instead, he is going for a quick twilight. Now, is he going to rush to Dark Templars? Oh, Dark Templar drops seem to be the flavor that he's going for. So he'll probably go DT drop into two base arbiter which is a very very strong strategy something that best is extremely good at as well i'm actually personally excited to see what sharp does here uh because this is one of the things that i most uh personally as a terran player have a hard time with these protoss players that 
go for all these techs at once, get those quick arbiters out and everything. But looking at what Sharp has done here, right? He's already got his engineering bay. He's throwing down a missile turret, so it's already looking pretty solid for him. He's got his detection. He's got a bit of anti-air here. Should be feeling relatively comfortable. Getting his economy really online. You can see he's three workers ahead because of how quickly he took his command center. And that's just fantastic. That is exactly where you want to be as a Terran player. If you can ever be ahead on workers over uh, the Protoss, that's amazing. He is throwing down another turret here. You know, obviously you're expecting some sort of shuttle play coming in, most likely Reaver. So is getting that. Second factory on the way. Siege mode coming up. So just really making sure that he's very, very safe. And I would imagine that we're going to see an armory popping up pretty soon. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so armory coming up for Sharp. Everything looking pretty good. The one thing that's a little bit scary is he doesn't have uh, mobile detection, right? He doesn't have uh, scanners. There's no academy. And that's normal. If you go ahead and get turrets, you generally wait to get your academy until between seven and nine minutes into the game, right? Like when you really have your economy flowing, you're already getting your third base. Sure, get it then. But we see that there are some Dark Templars going into the shuttle. Best going to fly across the map. Now with these two missile turrets, he can't fly in here. He'll just lose the shuttle, he'll lose the DTs, he'll lose everything. So when he sees those, he's going to have to fly around. And at that point, Sharp might actually put together what's happening here. This is a pretty quick shuttle coming up. DT drops actually come slightly quicker than uh, Reaver drops do. So, you know, seeing the shuttle up here before seven minutes, that should get your spidey sense tingling. We see his uh, academy coming up on the way. He does have another turret here too. He's keeping his units in a beautiful position. See, they're in between the two turrets, so they can go to either one very quickly if DTs come in. So we see this shuttle coming over. He's also throwing up a pylon at another location where Terrans like to expand, so I like that. It can also see drops going out. Best, in the meantime, flying in, seeing the units in a great spot. Ooh, the turret gets a ton of damage on the shuttle, and Best is just going to pull out. I think it's a, it's a good choice. He can't really get anything done here. Just some beautiful play here from Sharp. You really got to admire it. Uh, he's looked so solid, so so awesome this game, really. Uh, it's very impressive. Okay, so taking a look at what Best is doing, he's actually not doing uh, the two base arbor that I mentioned before. Instead, he's gone into robotic support bay and shuttle speed. This is the new style of, uh, of Protoss versus Terran. It's starting to really kind of take over from Arbiter plays. And it's something where you just get lots of speed shuttles and then you consistently do drops, uh, oftentimes suiciding your shuttles in and trying to get storm drops off on mineral lines. And then you try to whittle down the army with those size storms. You try to slow the Terran economy and then eventually break its army because generally when you're spending all of your money uh, trying to hurt their economy, their army is going to get a bit stronger than yours. So it's cool to see Best using this. He's definitely one of the fathers of this style. In fact, I think most people consider him to be the best player of this new style overall. He's had a lot of success with it recently. So Sharp, we see over here, he's going up to four facts. He has his third command center over halfway done. The starport on the way. Everything looks really good for him, really strong. Got his Vulture Speed out, which is a very important upgrade specifically for Sharp. He's actually probably the best Vulture user. I mean, maybe it's Flash, but <laughs> you don't want to always just be like, well, this guy's the best except for Flash. Uh, Sharp is really known for his Vulture harassment. He finds ways in that you, you never knew existed. He finds ways past people's defenses all the time with his Vultures. Does great scouting with them, great, great guerrilla tactics. Uh, awesome to see him with that Vulture Speed upgrade. In the meantime, Best over here. He's getting a Reaver into his shuttle. He's macroing pretty well, getting his upgrades. He has his shuttle speed. He has uh, a couple High Templars in here. Yeah, and there's, <laughs> there he is, killing three probes. Kills three probes for a 75 mineral vulture, gets out of there. And you can see he's still leading in that worker count by five workers. And he already has his comm stats, which costs about four workers uh, to make when you're, when you're making them in lost SCV production time. So... Uh, really great to see his economy is rolling. His upgrades are going to be just perfect here. He's already got plus one. He's going right up for the two one. Uh, he's got his third command center ready. He's starting to push out a little bit. Oh, but here comes Best dropping a couple Reavers here. He wants to slow him down, but actually the army here of Sharp is a bit better as long as he doesn't get it clumped up. 
Ooh, a pretty good hold right there from uh from best, I have to say. He's slowing Sharp down quite a bit. You saw Sharp try to bully his way out because I think he's realized that he does have an overall stronger army here. This is such a technical play from Best, but Best does hold him off for now. So every moment we see this third command center kind of floating here, this is lost value for Sharp. He wanted to float this right out, but he can't land it because of this. Uh, the double reaver is very annoying to deal with, so Sharp is probably just getting his macro rounds done. In the meantime, also sending a few vultures across. You can see this kind of interesting area where he runs down here, down the ramp, around. This is a possible expansion for them, laying some mines. Maybe he's going to bring some siege tanks up here. Not not entirely sure about that, but you see Best is ready for it. He's got some zealots here to try to stop them. So they do start to come up. In the meantime, oh god, we have a DT into the main base. That's kind of cute. I guess he has no scans left. The vultures looks like look like they didn't really get anything done here, but he's still running around with them a bit. Pretty close game right now. Oh my god, we lost SCVs. Oh, okay, I know exactly what happened. Sorry, guys, I was watching the vultures, but this is how quickly this occurs. Uh, remember he had that injured shuttle that had the DT and the two High Templars. He flew in and did a storm drop. Sharp dropped to 40 SCVs from 55. So that shows you the type of play that these speed shuttles are bringing right now to StarCraft 1. Uh, he got in there and killed 15 SCVs off. He lost a Dark Templar, a shuttle, and two High Templars. And... That is a very good trade for the Protoss player with this current style. So, uh, Sharp taking a bit of a bruising there, right? He's got to remake some of his SCVs. His economy is not as strong. Really, he's... I mean, about 45 SCVs is good on two bases. But he had 55, and now he's got to remake those and then make more if he wants to take his third. Instead, he's kind of trapped right now, right? Best is slowing him down with a very simple couple of Reavers. And Sharp... Like, when when is he going to get out? When is he going to get this third base? Seems very difficult to do for him right now. Best. Doing a great job with these High Templars. We can see he already has Kadarian Amulet to give them more energy. He's going to get more storms off of that. And they can bank more storms as well. Uh, he's got the plus one upgrade. He's actually got double forges going now as well. Uh, down here we see with 2-1 on the way. Uh, of course, Protoss upgrades not as important as Terran upgrades, but definitely it helps with a style like this uh, because you are just using so many gateway units when you get into the late game. You're really going to be whittling down the Terran army, so those upgrades definitely do count. So Sharp right now on six factories. That is definitely plenty. Six factories should be enough to help him get out and take over this area. And once he takes over this area here, he can finally take this base, which is so, so, so important. Now, he has been laying some mines in between to stop reinforcements, maybe catch any units running away as well. So, kind of a nice move there. The Dragoons starting to be attacked by Sharp as he moves up. Ooh, good targeting. Tries to pick off that Science Vessel. Does not quite get it. But it looks like he will finally push back these Dragoons. And hopefully this Reaver very soon as well, because he needs to take that third base. We see that Best right now, he's starting to spread around the map. He's got a group over here. He's got this uh, this fourth base taken, and even taking his fifth base now. So he's kind of getting that big economy that you're really afraid of. And you can't let a Protoss really get more than five bases when you're on three. And this is a late three for Sharp. So we're going to have to see him pull the trigger pretty soon here. He doesn't have a lot of options to just sit back and macro, in my opinion. I think, I think he's got to get out and take a piece of the map. Maybe start to push down through the center. Uh, here, you see there are some walls and things that you can kind of utilize in your push so you don't get flanked as hard. But best supply is starting to shoot up. Right, He's got 57 probes. It's pretty solid uh, to max out on. 173 supply overall. Uh, so he does have more army supply right now than Sharp, who is still hurting a little bit. Okay, so Sharp now. He does have that third base up. Some vultures over in this area. Trying to check if he's maybe sending an SCV out. Maybe deciding where he wants to take a fourth base. Because he's on six factories, right? If you're going to try to end the game, a lot of times you go higher than that. Because you can't really reinforce enough with six factories. So, it feels like he needs to get a, a fourth command center started really soon if he's going to take this game. 
All right, Best starting to attack in right now, but this is a great spread from Sharp. It's going to be very hard to bust, no doubt. Drops off these high tumblers, throws down some storms, mostly on vultures so far. So this is going pretty well for Sharp. That's a beautiful storm, though, on the tanks, dealing a ton of damage. Sharp needs to get some more vultures out here. There's a few zealots left over, but it look Oh, trying to drag that mine. Doesn't quite get it. But he really needs to stop the rest of these zealots. They're getting in here and getting on top of some of these expensive units. As the units rally out, they're very weak alone. So Sharp unseizes the back of his army, brings it forward. But this is mostly zealots. This is really hard for him to deal with. Zealots getting into this mineral line, just being as annoying as he possibly can. But Sharp will end up holding this. Remains on 44 SCVs. He's against the 61 of best. He's best pretty much reaching into that area of the most SCVs you want. You generally don't want more than about 66 SCVs nowadays in Protoss First Terran. That's kind of the trend that we're seeing. So he's kind of maxing out his economy. Again, he has those five bases, right? Yes, down here. Yes, he, he has this one. He has this one. This one. This one. And he has photon cannons at all the fringe ones. So that's going to be hard for Sharp to get any counter harassment on. Now, looks like best walk around. He does have a size storm available on this high Templar. Looks like he wants to get in here and maybe mess with the economy a little bit more. Sharp should see this coming. Oh, he definitely wants to get this. Oh, nice size storm there. Kills four or five SCVs and look at that terrible economy. Oh my God, where did that happen? <gasps> During that, best also sends in a speed shuttle over here, gets a sick drop off and suddenly out of nowhere, Sharp has lost more than 20 SCVs in the last few seconds. I mean, I am the observer. I know what I'm looking for, and I'm missing it. So you can see how difficult this is for Sharp to defend. Best setting up these beautiful attacks where he's harassing in two locations at once. And just such a hard time right now for Sharp. His economy has been slaughtered. He's still got a very good, a very strong standing army. And honestly, he needs to attack. I, he can't macro out of this. He's just, he doesn't have the worker count. The amount of money he has to spend to remake these workers on these bases that are actually getting very low on minerals, it's not worth it. He's got to move out and he knows that as well. He's coming down. He does have three to upgrade. So there's still a bit of a shot. Oh, out comes some high Templars here. Uh, I think we actually just saw maybe an EMP go off there, but more of them coming up. Look at this. He's trying to whittle down that army like I was talking about before. Throwing down the storms. All these tanks just so injured. Best starts to come with the flank, but realizes he will lose that army. So pulls back for now, waiting for a moment to pounce. Sharp in the meantime, getting up here. He lays down some mines. He's trying to stop units coming out of the main. He's going to move down and try to t attack the third, but that is spreading him very thin. A huge chunk of his army. I think this is a misclick. This can't be where he wants his army right now. Uh, he probably attack moved, but like attack moved here or something. So a little bit of glitchiness going on. Uh, does bring it back down though to join. And he's going to take out the third base. This is a great move from Sharp. He's kind of got him contained. He's dealing some damage to his economy, but in the meantime, Best takes this group of units that he had for the flank and says, you know what? I can't flank. That's fine. Let's hit that third base. But honestly, on 27 SCVs, him running from this base is not the biggest deal. He can actually just go and mine with them. I mean, it's terrible, but it's, it's not as bad as losing all the SCVs like he did before. All right, in the meantime, we have Sharp continue to attack. He's attacking over here into the sixth base. The fifth base is here as well. Looks like he's going to send a couple tanks down. Look at this. Sharp, just the master of multitasking right now. He is doing a fantastic job dealing huge amounts of damage here to best. So he's going to be able to take out this base. And honestly, he's going to take out this base as well. So it looks like Sharp's counterattacks at this point are going to end up killing four different Nexuses, which is huge. But is he going to have enough to finish this off? He's got very few units at home. His economy really badly hurt. Best starting to attack up with everything he has. Just going right up the side, dodging these mines, unfortunately for Sharp. Sharp is not going to hold on to his natural. In fact, he doesn't really have mines in his main to fall back on either. It looks like Best counterattack might just kill Sharp. Well, Best is going to have no bases left. What's he going to have? These few mineral patches and that's it. So look at this. This Nexus about to fall. This one's already gone. Goodbye to this base. This base going down as well. <coughs> but here is the attack that looks like it might end the game. And even though Sharp made an amazing attack, Best just has a bit too much left over. And Sharp does not have the defense required at home. 
best taking uh, this this new base as well. This is the type of base that can secure your victory. Four SCVs left for Sharp, which means he has to finish the game with the army that he has, but we already kind of knew that. My God, he's running across with his vultures. Trying to come home to do something, but what is there to be done, truly? Oh, look at this. Best dropping the zealots on the ramp to flank the vulture that was trying to harass against the cannon. Nice moves there as well. Ooh, a very good EMP. Gets the Archon, so that becomes just about useless. Sharp waiting for his army. He knows that he can't just run in willy-nilly. All right, here we go. Going in, trying to bomb on top. Oh, the size Storms are going to wreck. Look at that. The already damaged units of Sharp. Taking a beating from those size Storms. The rest of the army coming out here as well. Not targeting the Archon right away, so it gets a lot of extra damage in there also. And GG is called. Best going to take it and win the group.